Good, brilliant. Hi, I'm James. Uh, let's catch the chase. So, uh, as we've literally just been hearing... Oh, oh, it's coming up on here. Oh, dear. Well, anyhow. Um, I'll let them get on with that, and I'll just carry on speaking. Um, so, as we've literally just been hearing, technology has been coming on in leaps and bounds over the last few years, enabling the creation of accurate 3D cultural heritage. So, I don't know whether we'll get AI to do that or not, but it could be fun. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a cost and time effective way to present museum collections in the round using photogrammetry, focusing on how these models can be used for educational and outreach purposes, drawing on my personal experiences at the University of Reading's uh, Your Museum of Greek Archaeology. So a key aspect uh, at the Your Museum of Greek Archaeology uh, is education. Primary school students visit the museum most Wednesdays and core classics seminars are taught with the museum's collections. However, not all of our collections are on display and not all of them are safe to handle. Further, there are increasing expectations for museums to find new ways to engage with audiences in the digital age. Last year, funding was granted to develop a student-led prototype virtual teaching collection for archaeology and classics. It was hoped that this would make the collection more accessible and engaging and would support student learning objectives in archaeology and classics. A key part of this project, though, was to figure out how best to create these 3D models and disseminate them. So the first problem we had was where to start, with a team of four students working on a project for about one to three hours over a week over the course of one term, time was limited. Further, none of us had any prior experience in 3D modelling outside of a cursory interest. I won't go into too much detail in all the trials and tribulations that we went to. Suffice to say, we spent a fair amount of time getting things wrong in a very wrong way. Oh, hang on. It's this one, isn't it? Right, OK, well, I've been prattling on, but, yeah, we got things wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, so, nonetheless, over the course of this time, it became very apparent that while 3D scanners create brilliant surface detail, um, they created very large files, required a fair amount of technical know-how, and they were very time-consuming to make, so we turned our attention to photogrammetry. Photogrammetry works by piecing together a collection of photos to create a 3D digital image. And there are various computer programs and even mobile apps now that can do this with minimal need for in-depth technical knowledge from the user. So there are two things you need to take into consideration first before taking any photographs at all, and that is lighting and the target object. Even diffuse lighting will create the best results, and a matte surface on the object that doesn't reflect light um, is also a good recommendation. So the easiest way to capture the best quality photographs is with a DSLR and a tripod. Um, a fixed focal length lens is best, but not necessary. Um, and if you do use a very focal lens, make sure to keep the focus length continuous throughout. Um, take the photographs in small increments, circling around the object covering a full 160 degrees. Um, as you see here, you'll need to repeat this process, so the blue squares are actual photographs, um, at lower or higher angles to make sure you get a whole object and get a complete model. And also make sure your photographs are in focus. We had some problems with that too. <laughs> um, realistically, you can make an okay model with 30 or 40 photographs, but 100 to 125 will get you something more detailed. Um, though just be aware that it will take a lot longer to process. Um, and in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier with some holiday photos. So this is a Roman statue. Uh, these are 38 photos just taken on my phone. And this, if it will play, Anyhow, that's the general idea. Um, you, you get a 3D model out of that. Something, just 30 photographs, spend five, 10 minutes in a museum, and you're good to go. Um, however, um, Autodesk Remake is what I was just talking about and what I used, a friendly application. Uh, simply select the photographs you want to use, upload them to Remake servers, and the computational processing is done on their cloud. So perfect if you don't have a powerful computer. Alternatively, there's Agasoft PhotoScan, widely regarded as an industry standard, able to create better quality models than Remake, but does require a certain amount of user knowledge in order to create these models. Um, so you've perhaps had an attempt at making some of these models, and this is sort of some of the times that you get um, doing high-end stuff, so really do bear that in mind. But, you know, you've spent 169 hours or whatever creating this thing. What do you do with it once you have it? You know, what's the purpose for it? So, um, or even how do you show people this model? Um, we stumbled upon Sketchfab 
which really makes it so f the most obvious option for many museums wishing to share 3D collections with a wider audience. Sketchfab is an online third-party host for 3D models, and more and more museums and cultural heritage institutes are turning to this platform too. One of the reasons is that Sketchfab will provide any cultural heritage institute with a free business account. So this means that you can upload larger file sizes, which means the difference, to exaggerate a little perhaps, between being stuck with uploading this and being able to upload that. Uh, further, you can embed its 3D viewer in pretty much any website, and it's even supported in Facebook posts. And what is particularly great is that it offers an innovative way to explore an object. Annotations act as 3D museum labels, making for an engaging experience which uh, encourages self-learning. Um, thank you.